Hello and thanks for watching another edition of ARFCOM News. Today I want to tell you about the New York lawyer fighting to get his carry permit, a Kansas bill which would let 18-year-olds carry concealed, and why F Troop might have arrested a man over a picture of a machine gun part, plus lots, lots more. But before we get started, I want to tell you about the cruelty-free, gluten-free, non-GMO, zero trans fat night vision products offered to you by our friends at TNVC.com, just like mom used to make. If you like seeing stuff more than not seeing stuff, take a look at our sponsor, TNVC.com, your source for quality night vision gear to make you the bump in the night. Do you know how to get a concealed carry permit in New York City? New York City! Well, the first step is don't be a poor. After that, try not to be a minority, but that part isn't strictly required by law. It goes without saying you'll need some influence with the ruling class, of course. NYC permits are absolutely not for the common folk, and silly things like due process and equal protection won't be allowed to threaten their power structure. Once you have all that in order, you file a stack of paperwork, pay the official bribe, uh, I, mean, I mean fee, of $340, as well as the supplemental bribe, or, or, or um, fingerprint fee, of $88.25, and comply with any arbitrary demands the police department makes. Then hope they decide to allow you to have a permit. Or at least, that's how it's supposed to work. But Max Lafer had a carry permit in New York for almost 50 years and was suddenly denied for renewal. The NYPD claims he was denied because he refused to cooperate by submitting three months worth of bank statements, deposit slips, and proof of physical danger in order to convince them he has a need to carry. So Mr. Lafer is suing the department. His petition seeks the renewal of his permit and recovery of court costs. But if he doesn't win, the cops keep his guns. <laughs> what, what, what? Yeah, you heard that right. Not only does New York City require residents to grovel for permission in order to exercise the human right to carry a gun, you have to prostrate yourself before the throne of the almighty state just to be allowed to have a gun at all. So until Mr. Lafer's permit is approved, his guns stay at the police department. With any luck, this lawsuit could have a profound impact on the department's licensing procedures and could uncover all sorts of corruption and mismanagement. The licensing division has only approved about 14% of applications over the last year, whereas they had been approving about 70% of applications in the previous year. Back in 2017, the licensing division got caught taking bribes in exchange for expediting applications literal bribes, not just fees. I think there is every reason to expect this suit to expose more corruption and gross incompetence in the division, but maybe it's also possible the court will force the division to take less of a discretionary role in issuing permits, or maybe even force them to begin issuing permits on a shell issue basis, as the Heller decision did for the Capital Wasteland. And then Santa Claus will bring me a unicorn with a rainbow tail, and it can fly, and it will fart cotton candy, and I'll hold hands with it and frolic on the beach and my mom and dad will get back together and they'll take me to Peter Piper Pizza and I won't feel this crushing existential dread every waking moment of my life. In all seriousness, I wanted to know whether this case could produce a ruling which more broadly affected the permitting process in New York, so I reached out to my friend Michael Taylor, who is an attorney licensed here in Arizona who specializes in firearms law. Of course, his comment on this is just a general observation and obviously doesn't constitute a legal opinion on a state he's not licensed in. But he is a smart dude and he told me cases like this are likely to be narrowly focused on the immediate challenge to the agency's decision, which is likely to be overturned only if the court finds the agency acted without sound basis and reason and without regard to the facts. Michael also wanted me to be sure to let you folks know Sonoran-style bacon-wrapped hot dogs kick the crap out of those NYC dirty water hot dogs. What age are you considered an adult? We can't really seem to agree on a consistent line for adulty activities. I think pretty much everyone, except the most hardline ANCAP, can agree there does need to be a division between adulthood and childhood. Even if you believe in recreational cocaine and McNukes, you probably don't think they should be sold to children.
Uh, let me get a nickel bag. 15 bucks, little man. Put that shit in my hand. If that money doesn't show, then you owe me, owe me up. But you can get married at 12 years old in Massachusetts, you can get a job at 14, and you have to wait until you're 16 to drive a car. Our society seems to think 18 is old enough to adult pretty hard for most stuff, but you can't buy liquor or a handgun until you're at least 21. There is a strong case to be made that people were considered adults at much younger ages in the past, and there's also a compelling argument that our brains aren't really finished developing until about 25. But whatever age we consider to be the age of adulthood, I think it ought to be the same for everything. Maybe we should choose a nice even number like 20 and say that's the moment you become a grown-up. We're not like you! We're grown-ups, mother Prior to that, you need parental permission to engage in contracts, drive, serve in the military, buy a gun, or any other adulty stuff. What do you think? Does it make sense to have a different age for different things? How old do you think a person should have to be to carry a concealed firearm? The Kansas State House made it known that even wayward sons should be able to carry at the age of 18 by passing HB 2059 in an 85 to 38 vote. Kansas is a constitutional carry state and anyone over 21 who is allowed to possess a handgun can carry concealed without a government permission slip. Anyone over 18 who isn't a prohibited possessor can carry openly. But HB 2059 would allow 18 to 20 year olds to get concealed carry permits after a background check and training. It is still illegal under federal law for anyone under 21 to buy a handgun, but it is legal for a parent to gift a handgun to their child. HB 2059 now moves on to the Kansas Senate, so whether or not you live in Kansas, let's get those phones warmed up. Please pause the video right now and call 785-296-2149 and tell them to pass along a message to one of their lovely senators. Tell them it is only common sense that if a person can vote, get drafted, and be tried as an adult, they should be treated as an adult in regard to their basic human right to defend themselves. Tell them if we are not to consider 18-year-olds as adults, then the age for all these other activities should also be raised. Gundustry News! So the big giant news this week, which has been lighting up GD and the socials, is the owner of Auto Keycard might have been arrested by the ATF? Maybe? To unpack this one, we have to start with what the website and product are. As I'm recording this, AutoKeyCards.com is still up. They sell stainless steel cards which are laser engraved with a design which looks as though it would function as an auto sear if someone were to cut it out and install it in an AR-15 which was itself equipped with the right parts. If that's the case, this would be a relatively easy way to convert an AR to full auto. There's also a pen holder version with the internal lines already cut out. And that version has breaks in the outer lines. To be clear, the cards are not scored in such a way that you could just pop the parts out. They are simply etched with the design. It is literally just a picture of something which might function as an auto sear. So, why do we think the owner is getting the F Troop Spa package? because CRS Firearms says he knows the owner personally, and he says the owner has been arrested and his assets frozen. So it's entirely hearsay. As I'm recording this, I was unable to find any independent confirmation that an arrest was made. I emailed auto key cards, but have not received a response yet. But it is perfectly plausible. You could consider this product to be a sort of 80% auto seer, but it blurs the lines between what is a product and what is an idea. On its own, the auto key card is nothing, really. It's a paperweight, or maybe moderately useful for scraping global warming off your windshield in the morning, but it sure as hell isn't a machine gun. And it isn't a machine gun part unless you cut it into one. And if we're gonna consider it a machine gun part simply because you could make it into an auto sear, then what about a coat hanger, or folded bits of paper for that matter? 
If the ATF is indeed making arrests over something machine gun adjacent like this, they are moving into thought crime territory. And if you think that's some kind of distant future Tom Cruise movie nonsense, then you probably haven't ever heard of an illegal number. Now, it's too far off in the weeds to get into it right now, but the TLDR is that it is illegal to possess or publish certain numbers which can be used to unlock the copy protection on DVDs and Blu-ray discs in America. The reason this is all an issue is the National Firearms Act of 1934 doesn't just define actual machine guns as machine guns, but it defines any part as a machine gun if it was designed and intended solely and exclusively for use in converting a weapon into a machine gun. So the question in this case becomes whether this is intended for that purpose. There's no indication on the website whatsoever the company intends its product to be used in such a manner. On the other hand, there isn't any other apparent use for it, except maybe the penholder version. On yet another hand, it is supposed to be artwork, and do we now need to have a purpose for art? As I said, the only source for this is a YouTuber who says he knows the owner personally. It's possible he is mistaken. It's also possible the owner of auto key cards was arrested on unrelated charges. It's even possible this is all an elaborate marketing scheme. But my personal opinion is the story sounds credible and at the very least plausible given the ATF's track record. The one thing you can be certain of is we'll be following this one closely and if any new information comes out or if they set up a legal defense fund, I'll be sure to let you know. Well, life comes at you fast and things can change pretty quickly in this industry. As I was taking down the equipment for shooting this episode, which I normally do on Tuesdays for our Friday episodes, I got confirmation that the ATF did indeed seize autokeycards.com. We're gonna throw this up here, but what I'm looking at on my phone right here is that on the ATF.gov website, they're saying the websites autokeycards.com and autokeycard.com have been seized by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives and the United States Postal Inspection Service pursuant to seizure warrants obtained by the United States Attorney's Office for the Middle District of Florida. It is a violation of federal law to manufacture, receive, transport, and or deliver a machine gun not registered in the National Firearms Registration and Transfer Act. A machine gun is defined under federal law to include any part designed and intended solely and exclusively or a combination of parts designed and intended for use in converting a weapon into a machine gun. The possession of any machine gun conversion device sold on the, these web domains is a felony violation of federal law which carries a penalty of up to 10 years in prison and a fine of $250,000 per count. Yeah, a quarter of a million dollars sounds reasonable. If you are in possession of a machine gun conversion device sold by autokeycards.com or autokeycard.com, you should contact your nearest ATF office or call 1-800-ATF-GUNS. Yes, hello ATF. I'd like you to come meet my dog. Uh, so uh, this does appear to be legitimate. Um, it does appear that autokeycards.com got in trouble with the ATF. All the stuff I said a minute ago about how it's going to be interesting seeing how they prove that a design or a thought or an idea is a violation of law. This is going to develop over time. I will, of course, keep you abreast of the situation. And hopefully, we'll have a legal defense fund for, for me to point you guys to soon. So I found this picture on the interwebs of a sniper rifle developed by the National Defense University of Malaysia being presented to the Malaysian Minister of Defense. There is just so much going on here, but I'll see if I can tackle all of it. Paul, please put 60 seconds on the clock. Let's start with that stock. It looks like it was whittled from a fence post by a guy wearing overalls and a straw hat and stained with used motor oil. Hey, yo, should we free float this bitch? Nah, fam, just wrap a barrel band around it. That hide over bore, though. Not only is the scope attached to the receiver at a single point using a mount which looks less rigid than Wayne LaPierre's ethics, they decided it would probably be best just to cut the stock a little lower to avoid any chance the shooter's head might accidentally contact the stock. Nothing says accuracy like bobbing your head around behind a high magnification sight like you're trying to dodge a punch from Mike Tyson. 
I've seen Simonov carbines sporterized by Bubba with a framing hammer and a spool of baling wire which inspire more confidence in their accuracy potential. Fallout pipe rifles look more professional. It's like whoever designed it had never touched a firearm in their life but watched a couple of Royal Nunsuch videos and decided they're ready to give it a shot. But hey, they slapped a Night Force scope on top so they ought to be able to suppress human rights from a great distance. And time! Well, friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoy watching these things because I sure like making them for you. Do you want to know a secret to beating the ammo shortage? AR15.com slash deals is constantly updated with scores on ammo, guns, and accessories so you can get the drop on the neckbeards before they snatch up all the good stuff. So bookmark AR15.com slash deals and check out AR15.com slash deals every day. If you want to help us keep bringing you banger content like this, please support the folks who support us. Not only does TNVC.com give you that night vision with that cool, refreshing, never bitter taste that goes down smooth, they also have mounts, lights, and all sorts of other gear to make you the bump in the night. And if you want a baller cap like mine or other ARFCOM swag, you can get it at brownells.com. Or you can buy fly shirts like this one in our Teespring store. Or, if you'd like to try your luck and see if you can win your choice of rad shirt from our Teespring store, post a comment containing the phrase, First rule of Project Mayhem is we do not talk about Project Mayhem in the YouTube comments and I will arbitrarily and unilaterally choose the best one. I love you.